Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, regardless of where you are, it's time for us to study Spiritism. We have our dear friend this uh, with us, um, Marcio Lazaro, and he's going to talk about a very interesting topic. Hi, hi, Marcio, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how about you? Pretty good, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for uh, presenting such an interesting topic. We always have something to talk about when it comes to Jesus and, and, and Spiritism, and then, of course, Jesus and Spiritism combined. Uh, so uh, just as a reminder, our, our um, U.S. Spiritist Federation, we provide these lectures to you all um, every Saturday. Um, we also provide uh, courses, um, the introductory course to Spiritism, and the, Spirit, the U.S. Spiritist Federation has also done uh, substantial work uh, in the translation of Spiritist books to English. So um, the Sp U.S. Spiritist Federation is a nonprofit organization. However, we live in the material world, right? You know, like Madonna used to say, I'm a material girl and lives in the material world. The same way, even if you're a nonprofit, you still have uh, some uh, financial obligations. So uh, we have here a QR code. And if you want to help the U.S. Spiritist Federation with its mission, feel free to scan the code and to help us financial. Again, um, U.S. Spiritist Federation is nonprofit, and everything, all, all the resources are, are, are used in, in the dissemination of Spiritism. So, so much for that. Now that we got that out of the way, so uh, let's talk a, a little bit about Marcio. So, uh, Marcio, you've been studying Spiritism for more than 20 years. That's um, quite impressive. And um, you've been in the board of the... Uh, board member of the Alan Kardec Spiritist Center in Denbury, Connecticut, since 2012. And um, you also uh, are representative uh, in the Tri-State Spiritist Federation and the U.S. Spiritist Federation. Uh, you are also very dedicated in the promotion of Spiritism, and you have um, you have the, the video series, uh, Spiritism Philosophy for All, um, uh, also Conversations with God, Think With Me, and Spiritism Prayers. I mean, that is that is quite impressive. Uh, I'm a, a big uh, fan of conversations with God, short videos, and they 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 get very powerful messages. And you're also responsible for broadcast spiritist, uh, several spiritist talks, and uh, you've produced two audiobooks, Jesus in, in the Home um, and On the Way to the Light. And recently, you've developed an app, My Path, um, that offers many tools uh, for spiritism uh, around the world. So. This is quite impressive. You've been quite busy, and uh, we appreciate you you being here this morning, and um, and talk to us about Jesus and, and Spiritism. So, um, without any further ado, please uh, go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. And um, well, I'd like to start by expressing thanks first to God and to our Master Jesus, and also to all benefactor spirits and um, the U.S. Spirits Federation for this invitation, for the opportunity to be here with you today, and to all people that have contributed in one way or the other so we can be here. Um, I also thank you for watching either now live or maybe later. But uh, our responsibility and task are to really be like an ambassador to um, not bring a personal or uh, personal view or opinion, but rather to bring what Spiritism says um, about Jesus. The format today is that I will talk for some time and later uh, we will have a chance and opportunity to interact more. Uh, you'll be able to say something and if you have questions uh, and you have, you have the courage to ask, <laughs> please do so. I promise I will try my best to answer um, as we are in December, um, it, it always the songs say it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere we go. And we are almost a week from Christmas Day. And um, we have no intentions really to cover the entire subject. Um, but we should give you a very good idea of some aspects of Spiritism and about the importance of Jesus for humankind. Um, starting with some basic concepts in Spiritism, is that God exists. God is a supreme intelligence, the first cause of all things, as it is described in the first answer of the Spirit's book. 
a book published by Allan Kardec based on many questions he asked to superior spirits. And according to spiritism, God is not an abstraction, it's not the infinite, it's not the collective intelligence. Um, it is true that we're not capable of comprehending the essential nature of God because of our level, our evolution level. Uh, we lack the sense required to comprehend God. When we are no longer obscure by matter, and when we have closer to perfection, or to come closer to perfection, we will see and understand God. God has many attributes, and we can understand some of them, not all, but some. And the ones that we know, the attributes are that God is immaterial. So it's not matter, it's not a spirit either. God is the creator of all things, everything. God is unique and all powerful. So there's only one God and no others. God is immutable, so it doesn't change. God is eternal. So it's not subject to time. And God is infinite, good, and just. So all these attributes, as we know, and the spirit, the high spirits, will tell us that the universe, the whole universe, is God, God's creation. Then that there are three elements. Spirit, matter, and above all, the creator of all things, God. So, the spirit is the, the intelligent principle of the universe. Intelligence, or the thinking, is an essential attribute of the spirit. Matter, as we know, exists in many states, many that we know, but also exists in other states that are so subtle that may escape our perception, our way of understanding. And the more we go and discover things, the more we discover the different ways that matter is presented to us. But the union, the, so matter and, and spirit are independent of each other, but the union of both is necessary to give intelligence to matter because matter by itself cannot think. The, the one that thinks is the spirit. So the spirits are God's creation, and all the spirits are created the same way, as we like to say in spiritism, based on the teachings that we receive from the superior spirits. All the spirits are created simple and unaware. Spirits are not created at the same time in scale, but they all have the same starting point. They were not created at the same time simultaneously in time, but they all start from the same point. They all created simple and unaware. And all the spirits are created to reach perfection and they evolve for incarnations Humans, we are spirits experiencing an incarnation. In other words, we are spirits with a body. And not the other way around, that sometimes we can get confused. We are not a body with a spirit. Because the spirit precedes the body and the spirit will succeed the body. We all know the body tempor is temporary. Right? One day, the body will end, but the spirit will not. The spirit is immortal. Immortal is different than eternal. Immortal means it does not die. Eternal means it always exists. God is immortal. Spirit, or I'm sorry, <laughs> God is eternal. Spirits are immortal. In the evolution process, spirits need to gain knowledge and morality. 
like the two wings the birds use to fly high. In the process, when this process is done, is by basically helping oneself and helping others by love and improving yourself and by love and help helping your neighbor other spirits and once they uh, reach the sublime state of purity through evolution they are fully committed to guide other spirits to reach perfection the so-called angels were not created as angels the superior spirits were not created special they were all created the same way simple and unaware and by evolving, learning, making good choices, helping others, they have reached this level of evolution. The concept that Spiritus brings to us does not take any credit from them. It's quite the opposite. It gives them credit. Credit for all the work, all the good choices that they have made in their evolution. Therefore, when or we may ask ourselves, um, if God, God creates all, everything, all the spirits, was Jesus then created simple and unaware? Or is Jesus part of God? Or maybe even God itself? God is indivisible, so it cannot be divided. God is not a spirit. God is the creator. In other words, God is the father. As Jesus referred many, many times. In a book called uh, On the Way to the Light, written by the spirit, uh, spirit Emmanuel, channeled by Francisco Candido, Xavier, or in good Portuguese, Chico Xavier. Emmanuel writes that Jesus is a pure spirit that was chosen by God around 4.5 million billion years ago to coordinate the creation of our planet Earth. So Jesus was or has reached perfection more than 4.5 billion years ago. And he was chosen by God to be the guide of all spirits experiencing incarnation on earth. So Jesus is with us in guiding humankind on this planet, not since around 2000 years ago, but at least 4.5 billion years ago. That's a lot of time, right? Since the beginning, Jesus has been taking care of us by coordinating the details of this beautiful planet. We, everywhere we look, we see how beautiful it is, how perfect this planet is. Later, by sending his missionaries, prophets, messengers to help us and think about the gospel was foreseen when we study we can see that the gospel was foreseen thousands of years before the coming of jesus indicating that they are all connected and that jesus inspired prophets in their accomplishments which have navigated time and have stimulated the admiration and respect of us all so when the time came Jesus comes to fulfill the prophecies and teaches by words and by examples the divine law of love. Today, virtually all specialists and scholars, independent of religious affiliations, agree that Jesus existed, that about 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born. The precise date, month, and year we do not know. It is very unlikely that Jesus was born in December 25th 
of year one as in our calendars. Jesus was born around four to six years before year one. And that is correct. Jesus was born before Christ in our calendars. And how do we know? Well, Herod, the great king of Judea, die in the years in the year minus four and this is documented so we know that according to the history in matthew herod once learned about that the king of jews was born ordered all the boys below the age of two to be killed joseph and mary with baby jesus escaped to egypt so a simple math makes uh, us into that Jesus at that time was below the age of two and therefore must be born around year minus six to minus four. And when Jesus was with Mary or, or uh, when um, Joseph and Mary were going to Bethlehem because of the census when Jesus was about to be born, that was the, the reason why they are they were traveling is because the Romans ordered the census. And although uh, Romans were not super good to, to, to people that they control, uh, it would be very unlikely that the census will be ordered in the winter months. Also, Luke described that when Jesus was born, shepherds were watching their animals. So again, unlikely that this was in the winter months. But does it change anything? Does it really matter? Not at all. The spirits tell us that this time of the year is so special because people all around the globe are thinking about Jesus and the Christmas and the surrounding everything is different. The high spirits have easier access to inspire us to do better. We make it easier for all of us because the way we are thinking. In the book, The Gospel According to Spiritism, the third book of the Spirit's codification, which is entirely dedicated to Jesus, Alain Kardec, the French educator who codifies spiritism, indicate that regular events of the Jesus life, the miracles, the prophecies, or other points taken by religions on which they base their dogmas, they have been object of controversies. However, Jesus' moral teachings, the divine code that even people with no beliefs agree and recognize as sublime. This is the common ground where all people can be united and the and flag under which we may gather whatever creed we may be because it has never been a matter of dispute. Again, Jesus taught us by words and by examples the divine law of love. One day, on the mount side, Jesus began to teach, saying the Beatitudes, or the Beatitudes, the most sublime teachings which provides consolation and hope to all humankind. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted or comfort. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for rightness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will show mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs 
is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of him. Express joy and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecute the prophets who were before you. With these 10 beautiful teachings, they are so important, so consoling, so much hope, but not the vague hope. These are real courage, real optimism, confidence, assurance. These are not empty. These are filled with pure knowledge and love. It is pure justice and good. It is as good as it gets. Jesus did not come to abolish the divine law, the prophets. Prophets were his messengers. Do you think he came to abolish them? But he came to fulfill them and to set straight what was the right thing to do. He said, you heard what it was said to the people long ago. You should not murder. And anyone, anyone that murders will be subject to the judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry against a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. So before you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and reconcile with them. Then come and offer your gift. He also said, you have heard what was said. You should not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone that looks at the woman with bad intentions has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to stumble, take it out and throw it away. Because it's better for you to lose one part of your body than to lose your whole body. And the same thing with your hands. He also said, you have heard what it was said, a knife for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I will tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to suit you and take your shirt, hang over your coat as well. And if anyone forces you to go and walk one mile, go and walk two miles with them. Give to the one who asks you. And do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. And he also said, you have heard, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of a father who is in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends the rain to the good and the bad. And if you love only those who love you, what reward would you get? Not even the tax collectors do that. And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Be perfect as your father is perfect. So these are so amazing, so incredible. Everyone sees as the highest moral standards. 
but someone could say, yes, it is highest moral teachings ever taught, and yes, but these are words. It is easy to say, yes, it is easy to say. It can be even simple to memorize, but hard to put in practice. But Jesus did not just teach us by words. He taught us by words and examples. And this is crucial. The Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and put her in front of the crown to Jesus and said, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stun such a woman to death. What do you say? They said this to test him so they could use something to charge against him later on. But Jesus then bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger, but they insist and persist in questioning him. So then he stood up and asked the question, let the person among you who is without sin be the first one to cast a stone at her. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the oldest one. And he was left alone with the woman standing there. Then he asked her, My dear, where are those who accuse you? Hasn't anyone condemned you? She replied, No one, Master. And Jesus then told her, I don't condemn you either. Go, and from now on, sin no more. So Jesus did not approve what she was doing. Not at all. By the way, the law of Moses say, um, said that the man and the woman caught in adultery should be stoned to death. But for some reason, there was only the woman that was brought before him. He did not approve the act. He did not say, go, it's all fine, it's okay. No, he said, go and sing no more. He also did not condemn those who put her, or put the woman, before him. He did not say anything to send them away in the bad way. He asked a question to their conscience. Let the person among you who is without a sin be the first to cast a stone. When Jesus was arrested, Peter reached for his sword to protect his beloved master. He drew his sword and stuck one of the servants of the highest priest, cutting his ear, defending Jesus. Jesus turned to Peter and said, put your sword, as your sword back in its place. For all those who drew, draw the sword will die by the sword. Don't you think I cannot call my father and he will put my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. He knew that it would happen to him. He even said it was happening that way to fulfill the prophecies. But did, Jesus did not want that kind of revolution based on blood. When Jesus was being crucified, after being betrayed, left alone, punished for no reason whatsoever, and under scrutinating pain, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Of course, Jesus also did many other things. And as John wrote on his last words, and we suppose if every one of these, of these things that Jesus did were reading down, the word 
could not contain all the books that would be written. In the world of such a polarization like today, like it was when Jesus was walking among us, Jesus would disappoint many, as he did at that time. Some expect him to condemn all sinners. Some others wanted him to lead a revolution and take back their land and spell all intruders, outsiders by force. He does all this. He condemns the sin, but not the sinner. He leads a revolution and spells all bad things that are inside us. The issue is not what comes in, but it is what goes out. Because the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Those who are well have no need of physician of a physician um, those who are sick are the one that need a physician jesus did not came to call the righteous but sinners and as it was at that time and it might be today then many might be disappointed with him it is because we are trying to feed Jesus into our views and not the other way around which is trying to fit myself into his teachings so who is Jesus in spiritism what is Jesus important the answer it's very easy to remember. Jesus is the most perfect type that God has offered to us to be our guide and model. The most perfect one. This is in the question number 625. In the comments of this question in the Spirit's book. Jesus is so elevated, so pure, so sublime, so perfect, so connected and so in tune with God. Jesus is the realization of the highest moral perfection that we may achieve on earth. God offers Jesus as the most perfect model and what he thought is the purest expression of the divine law because he was animated by the divine spirit and was the purest being that ever walked the face of earth. This is why for people, they are not spiritists, people from other beliefs. Jesus is taken as God itself. Is there an issue with that? No, it is fine. This is not what will divide us. This is not what can set us apart. On the other hand, understanding learning from jesus and follow following his teaches teachings must be what you will unite us all before anyone will know that we are his disciples we have to love one another as he instructs us and no one comes to the Father except through Him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. 
as simple as this. Jesus in Spiritism is so important, so important for us to learn, to understand, to put in practice all his teachings, to understand who we are, because the master is taking care. He's taking care of this planet and all the spirits that are here. And as he said, no one go to the Father except through him. I hope that today I was able to cover some aspects of Jesus' life, giving him the importance as we are approaching Christmas when we all remember when he was born. But more important than the date, it is that we remember that he was born, that he taught us the lessons, the examples, and everything he taught us. It is everything we need to be happy, to evolve. We need to follow his footsteps. And it might be hard. And it is hard. A lot of time, it is hard. It's not easy. But it's possible. He showed us. He, his whole life was guiding us, teaching us what to do. So I will stop here and we will have a, a chance to interact a little bit more. And um, we may, uh, we may even, uh, if we have some questions, we may even discuss and talk a little bit about um, Jesus and, and, and spiritism. Because otherwise it gets too excited. <laughs> yeah, well, we should be getting excited. I mean, this is, this is a special time. And I, I like the way that you focused, um, you start focusing on the attributes of God. I, I really like that, that uh, the way you started your talk. And then you mentioned se several aspects of Jesus' mission. So uh, quite interesting, uh, quite interesting points. Yeah, we do have a few questions here. So, okay. Um, for some people, especially those that are new to spiritism and come from other Christian religions, the concept of Jesus being like us and not God is difficult to accept. How spiritism can help them get more comfortable with this idea? So basically with the idea that, hey, you know, Jesus is not God, that he's a spirit, like you mentioned, that, he, that was uh, that evolved and, and reached that, that level. Yeah, so, well, I think it's a... It's a as I said at some point, it, when we understand that all spirits were created uh, simple and unaware, and, uh, and, and if they have reached perfection, it's, uh, they weren't created like that. It is not that takes them any credit and it takes them anything away from them. It's actually the quite opposite. It gives them all the credit right? because it, it, it shows how it can be done. And it's an it's incentive for all of us to, to be like them. They show exactly how, how it's done. And as, as I also said, it, if somebody comes in and wants to focus on that, I think there are so many points for us to agree on that we can put aside someone that we may disagree at, at this point and then focus on the things that we can agree Jesus is so close it's so in tune with, with God that it gets confused with God itself and that's okay 
that should not send to be something that sets us apart. We, we, we have many other things that we agree, many other things. And this is just one point that maybe later on we'll be able to comprehend better. But as, as Jesus was, <laughs> I always like the one he was talking to Nicodemus, which was a high, really a, um, a scholar at that time. And, and Nicodemus was asking Jesus about the spirit, how, how a man can reach um, the, 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 the kingdom of God. And, and Jesus has a, a phrase, a sentence, and say, the wind blows where it wants to. You hear its sounds, but you don't know where, it's, where it comes from or where it's going. There are many different things that we are not we are not comprehending a hundred percent. So let's focus on the things that we agree and we can comprehend. And it's for you. Do you want to take it as as Jesus and God is the same? It's okay. We can focus on other things that we agree and set this apart a little bit. Once we have accumulated more knowledge, we then maybe go back to that point. Yeah, good point, right? I mean, the, the whole idea of focusing on what we agree on, right? And not so much on what we disagree. We have, we have more questions here for you. Mm -hmm. How can one celebrate Christmas with family, friends, and co-workers without losing sight of its true meaning, that is, the celebration of Jesus' birth and mission? Yeah, well, some, um, some other, um, let's say, uh, philosophies or religions, they, they also celebrate some other important dates. And this might be uh, your, your situation that you go in one place and, and a lot of in professional setup, people trying to not bring too much of a religion subject into the conversation. So you will see that for some people, they may say Merry Christmas. For some other ones, they may say Happy Holidays. And, and it might be some people that may not celebrate anything. But, uh, but the spirit is the same. And it's as Kardec mentioned in the Gospel according to Spiritism. If we stay focused on areas that may have been um, a subject of dispute, we will always be in that scenario. But if we stay focused on the moral teachings, then that there is no dispute, there is no questions. If one wants to celebrate with cohorts, with friends, and without losing really the side that for, for me, for you, we are celebrating Jesus' birth. We may say it, we may keep his teachings in the spirit. And in every opportunity that we have, we may show it in our actions. That even though we may not say it, or maybe repeat it many times, People will be able to observe by our acts, by the way that we behave, who we are and who do we follow. And time will come when his teachings will be equally distributed for all of us. So let's not try to force people into something that they are not yet ready for. Yeah, it is interesting, right? You mentioned the whole uh, idea of people saying, hey, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, right? Mm -hmm. and actually, what truly matters is the spirit. And like you mentioned, um, whatever labels we have, what matters actually is our actions, right? You could be, you can be from different religions with different beliefs and still be very Christian. Meaning up to follow of Jesus. 
Yeah, and one thing I, I would like to mention is that at the same time, we shouldn't um, go the other extreme, right? And and start missing and, and losing all the reference to Jesus. So it's not that we're going to make it uh, everything in, into, is this just a celebration, is a human kind celebration? No, we need to remember. And if we believe, if we know, and if we have Jesus as the most important one for our lives, we must know this and keep Christmas for celebrating um, that Jesus was born. So we may not force others to, to, to do what we want them to do or what we want for ourselves. But this should be clear to others who we are and who do we follow. Very good, thank you. Thank you for that explanation. Can you explain Jesus' resurrection according to Spiritism? That is quite an interesting question. Yeah, that can be that can be a um, a whole talk by itself, right? Uh, the whole concept of uh, resurrection, uh, as originally, it was it's like a body coming back, right? like from from and and we know. I mean, back then we 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 already know, but even nowadays we know this is against the the law of nature, nature law. We, we would know that the flesh would never come back as it was, especially for uh, people that have uh, passed away in many years. And, and in, in point, the point for Jesus, if, if he would come back in resurrection as, as it was, as this concept is, that he would come back as flesh, right? his body, as it was before, he would have to go someplace because his body was made of matter. And matter has to be organized and it has to go somewhere. In other words, if we then in spiritism <clears throat> understand as the spirits teach us that what he saw that was not his physical fleshly body, everything makes sense and we do not have to be then thinking about where did he go how his body his fleshly body he was the fleshly body that he had it was um, made for this planet now he sent it to heaven and what it is so we start creating and, and we get very creative with a lot of theories and reasons to explain something based on the concept of this pure resurrection because we are thinking we are limited by thinking that when the when there is a resurrection it was his fleshly body that really came back and we know that this will be against um, a divine law and why not <laughs> and, and it makes total sense that he doesn't need matter, not as we know his body. So if tomorrow um, some, some people find the remains of his body, religions that take that as a dogma will have a hard time explaining dealing with that for spiritism nothing will change because again we understand that resurrection wasn't his fleshly body and again we also take as the most important point it's not the resurrection per se or he's ascended to heaven but everything that he taught us And then, interesting also the the message right the the true i mean regardless of how different um 
doctrines or religions trying to explain it, but the message that we live on, right? He gave us proof that that the spirit lives on. Yeah, that's yeah. So um, one last question for you. Mm -hmm. In a world with so much divisiveness, how can one foster unification while remaining faithful to one's ideas, beliefs, and values? Yeah, I think the, the answer, and it's not I'm trying to um, go around it, but I think the answer is right on the question. It's remain faithful to one's ideals, beliefs, and values. Because if we stay that, we will also be understanding. We will see that not everybody is in the same level of understanding, of um, knowing what we know. We have to respect and not trying to force people into something that they are not ready for. The world is all divided. We all know. We're experiencing this. Left, right, up, down, in, out. But at that time, when Jesus came to earth, the world wasn't that much different. Technology, in, in terms of technology, we are way ahead. But in terms of morality, not much so. At that time, the world was one way or the other way. And people were expecting a savior to come and do what they want them to do. They weren't ready to shape themselves into the savior they were, they wanted to shape the Savior into their views. And that never happened. This would never happen. The same way today, if we want to shape Jesus and his teachings into our views, we will every time get it wrong. We will never succeed. Therefore, that's what I, when we say that for some people, if Jesus would come on earth again, the same way he did in about 2,000 years ago, some people will get disappointed because he may not go and condemn the woman that was caught in adultery. The same way, he did not condemn the people that brought him, her, before him. We need to change, not the other way around. Very nice. Um, and that was the last one. Um, any final comments? And again, if there are also any comments about the topic and if there are any projects that you're currently working on that you'd like to mention. And after that, uh, feel free to say the final prayer for us, please. Um, yeah, well, I, I may just emphasize again um, how happy I am and how honored I really uh, I feel uh, with this opportunity. Um, and I want to congratulate you uh, and everybody involved on these uh, talks. I know how, how hard it can be to be every Saturday um, doing this, but it's, it's a great material. It is a great opportunity to be um, broadcasting this, but also that this is available for many, many people. And a lot of times when we do this, um, we have really no idea how many hearts we can touch, how many times people, um, they watch it, and how things can change their lives. And it might be a little sentence, a little thing that one person may say and make them think different, and that spark 
something in their in their mind and a few a lot of times they might not even say anything but we 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 get to know this because sometimes they they leave a comment on the video and you say you you read this comment and and you say so these people are, are not anonymous <laughs> These are these are real people. They are making this comment because it made the difference in their life. So this is so important when we do this and when we uh, leave these videos here because everyone can access. It's it's a material. It's really an important source of material, and we do have a lot of things or bad things or things that are not good. We have a lot of trash. We also need good materials, good videos, good talks, things that will bring um, knowledge, that will bring comfort to people. Hard is, the life is hard. It, it's, it's not easy. We all know how challenging it can be. From some people, they go through tribulations and sometimes they're in the edge of losing their hope. They are really on the edge. And somehow, we all know how it happens, but let's say somehow they come across a video, something that they stop, watch it, and this gives them hope. It changes their life. So, I am very, very honored to be a part of this, and I'm really, really very uh, grateful for all the work that the U.S. Spirits Federation is doing for these years. Yeah, it is very nice. Actually, uh, you, you made a very good point, right? There's so much negativity around us. Mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's good to, for the U.S. Spirits Federation to offer this little glimmer of hope. Uh, just uh, before you say the final prayer, I'd like to let everybody know that uh, uh, for the next few weeks, um, we're going to take a pause on our weekly lectures. Uh, however, we will reconvene on uh, January 7th. So, yeah, we're going to take a, a break so everybody can celebrate um, the holidays, whichever way they want. So, you know, try to get all these positive vibes. And then we'll be back uh, in the beginning of, of January, more specifically on January 7th. Um, Marcio, yeah, please go ahead. Say the final prayer for us. Okay. Well, um, I like to close my eyes, but um, feel free to, to do so. And with our thoughts elevated to our Creator and our Master Jesus, we give you many thanks for this opportunity for today and everything we have in our lives. We ask you, Father, to give us strength to go through some tribulations and to help us to never lose sight of your love, of your guidance, and also to nourish our soul and fulfill us with your hope your peace and finally help us to polish ourselves, to polish our soul so we better reflect your love in all directions we give without expecting anything in return so we may get closer to you every day in our lives. We love you, Father. And we also understand how much you love us.